Hello lovely, it's Yasmin Boraji from Tiny Time Big Results and today I want to talk to you about um, your pitch and your introduction when you're a networking meeting or you meet uh, a new, just when you meet new people. Um, <clears throat> do you ever get the sense that I'm boring them? Do you ever get the sense of they're desperately trying to find an exit route? Who else can I go and talk to? Yeah, we've all been there. Trust me, we've all been there. And, you know, you're thinking, how can I captivate them? So much so that they just go, oh, Yasmin, tell me more. I need to know more. Well, <clears throat> here's a very, very simple way of approaching this problem. Uh, it took me a long time to get this. Uh, I'm a bit slow in that way. I, it always takes me ages to catch on what everyone else knows. So if you're like me, don't worry. It took me ages too. Okay, so I want to share with you about how to make this much more easy. Is that, is that a good English? How to make this easier for yourself and how to create an introduction that is really magnetic and compelling and somebody wants to know more. This is my number one simple tip, okay? And then I've got a few other tips as well that I'll share with you because I, I can't help myself. So here's the thing, right? If you're worried that you are boring people with your pitch, with your introduction, um, <clears throat> with your elevator pitch, if you like, then here's what you do. Instead of kind of rambling on about what it, you know you do or the mode that you use, a modality of, you know, I'm a therapist or I'm a healer or I'm a coach, like that stuff doesn't really resonate with people because they just hear words, blah, blah, blah. So instead, what you do is you talk about a juicy problem. So you could start off with, you know how? And what you're doing is you're really creating that level of interest where somebody kind of wants to lean in and they want to know more. And this works really beautifully because you know as you may have heard before we all love stories and it feels like you're telling a story so if I use my own example so I might say something like well you know how when you're um you know you've got kids and you're trying to get all the stuff done for them and you've got school runs and you've got you know activities and homework and you know just keeping them alive and then on the other side, you've got your business and, you know, it's running your ragged and, you know, there's a lot going on on your plate. And they kind of go, yeah, I, I know, I hear you. You know, and say, so, well, what I do is I help business owners to run a profitable business, but it only takes them 20 hours a week or less so that they can be less busy, less frantic, less overwhelmed, and they can spend more quality time with their family. They can enjoy more freedom, more flexibility, and without their money taking a, a hit. And they're like, oh, that sounds amazing. Now, sometimes it's shorter. I say I help small business owners run a profitable business in 20 hours a week or less. And what happens is you don't need to give the farm when you're giving your introduction. What you're trying to do is plant a seed and pique curiosity. So like, oh, that sounds really interesting. I'd love to know more about that. Now, I've had situations where I've said my pitch, uh, my introduction, and someone just went, hmm, that's nice. Um, and that's, that's, that's not the response that you want to get. You want to get a response where somebody says, wow, that sounds really cool. And it's interesting because when I talk about what I do, um, I often, you know, attract people who are not parents yet, but want to be parents or are planning to start a family. And they say, oh, God, I really need to know how to make the business work for when I do have kids or, you know, that they have kids and they're like, yeah, I'm really struggling right now. And, you know, so, you know, how could you help me or what does that look like and what do you talk about and what do you share about? And that starts a conversation. And that's really what you know, I suppose when you think about when you're turning a prospect into a paying client, that's what you're really trying to do is initiate a conversation. Whether someone goes onto your website and they look at your blog posts, their, your videos, your podcasts, what they're trying to do is get into your world and find out what it is that you do and whether you can help them. And so when, if you're thinking that your pitch is boring people and that they're just tuning out, then talk about a juicy problem you know, that they are potentially facing. So you're not 
tailoring it for that person you say okay this person is male and 45 and he's going to be struggling with this you're just talking about the problem that you're solving and this is really crucial because if you're not sure what it is that your business does keep asking yourself that question what problem do i solve for my community for my people for my tribe and that really helps because what you're doing is you're taking the focus off yourself and you're putting it on them when people are talking to you and you know we humans are a funny species a lot most of the time we're thinking what's in it for me what's in it for me and so you need to be constantly asking or answering that question of what's in it for them what's in it for them and remember when you're talking to somebody they may not be your ideal client but they probably know someone who is or they could be a great partner or a collaborator you know a joint venture partner you just don't know it could just be a great business buddy or a person that you can just kind of you know shoot the breeze with um, it doesn't matter the thing is what you're doing is you're sharing what it is that you do and you're being visible and you're being really concise and articulate about what it is that you're doing so here are my top tips just as a summary talk about a juicy problem make sure you focus on them and the person so that they can answer that question of what's in it for me um, what impacts does this problem have on the person so you know so what and i was kind of sharing earlier you know so that if you're really busy and you're overwhelmed what happens is you know it takes time away from you and your kids and you don't get to you know enjoy that downtime that you have and so it creates a lot of stress and it creates you know maybe you're burning the midnight oil because once the kids are in bed you're then like trying to work because you know you've been so busy all day so you know you talk about the impact on that person and the key thing here is uh, especially when it comes to an introduction especially when you're initiating that conversation is less of the I and more about them make it about them you share your story and why you do what you do and you know why it's so important to you but then it's just got to be about them make sure the focus is all about them so they really get a sense of first of all that you understand their problem and the fact that you understand and you can articulate that problem means that they believe that you have the solution and then they really want to know more make it all about them talk about a juicy problem make it about them focus on them and i promise you your pitch your elevator spiel uh, your introduction will not be boring you will captivate them and you will magnetize the right person for your business hope that's been useful uh, if you'd like to know more about how i could help you in your tiny time business get you more leads more sales more clients uh, in 20 hours a week or less then be sure to book your tiny time triage call it's a free 15 minute session with me and we can figure out where you need help and if i'm the right person to help you you'll find the link below um, it's www.bitly forward slash tiny time triage and be sure to check out yasminvoraci.com for more articles and blog posts um, and i'd love to be able to help you with your tiny time i'll talk to you soon take care